Hi, this is Christy with Carter & Company Real Estate Group, and I'm here with Valerie Gonzalez with RPM Mortgage, and she's just going to give us a little bit of insight into what is trending in on the lending side of things right now for real estate. I know a lot of people have questions, and with the way things are with the coronavirus, I mean, first off, like my, my heart and thoughts go out to anyone who's been affected by this and I guess it's all of us but but uh you know I'm really really grateful to be healthy still so so Valerie hi, hi there <laughs> uh so tell me um a lot of buyers and sellers right now are feeling very uncertain about the direction of the real estate market um what can you tell them say I have buyers that are in escrow right now and what should they be concerned with or not concerned? And should a buyer still proceed with the sale? Um, should they let this virus halt their home search process or should they proceed? Yeah, good questions. Um, as we all know, the, the word is unprecedented. Everything is unprecedented times right now. So the mortgage industry is absolutely being affected changing every day we're keeping up with the guideline changes but we absolutely are still in business we are closing loans every single day people are still getting in homes they still need somewhere to live so it is still definitely um opportunities are still out there i think there is you know new guidelines in place that we have to be aware of and understand that there is changes happening i mean that's just the truth it feels like the sky's falling it isn't it's just changing the industry um but just more specifically i think things to consider you're in escrow um as we see daily our guidelines are changing or tightening so what that means is that there is a little more um maybe tightening as far as FICO score. So if you're currently in a loan and you're locked and you're ready to close, your, your chances are you should be fine. There shouldn't be any changes. Communicating with your current lender is obviously imperative at this time. If you have a job change that's going on or a layoff, that could absolutely impact your loan, even if you are in a locked loan and have an approval. We do verify at the end of, you know, a day before we close. So if you have any changes to a job, immediately contact your lender. So that's one thing um, that's probably first off if you're in the process. Um, but if you're in the process of shopping, for instance, looking for a house, getting pre-approved, if you got pre-approved last week, three weeks ago, you need to make sure that pre-approval is still good because with, like I said, the guidelines tightening, um, the, that means that the, you know, the, the guidelines are changing. So maybe FHA, VA and USDA, they have been greatly affected. So before we used to be able to lend on maybe 620 FICO and in some cases it's up to 680 now, and this is case by case lender by lender. So, um, that's what I mean by tightening. There may be more reserves required. So. Mm -hmm. Overall, it's just the communication with your lender. Hopefully you're working with somebody that you, you trust and that they are up to date on all the changes. Mm -hmm. um, so those are really probably, so in escrow would be making, you know, the job keeping communication. Um, Pre-approvals would be make sure it's still pre-approved. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that's probably those two things. As far as appraisals, appraisals are changing. Have you seen that at all, Christy? <laughs> Yes, I have. But tell me from your, because, you know, you have a whole different perspective on it. What is happening with the appraisals? So they were still working it out to see, you know, can we go, can they go in the house and, you know, get, you know, still get the appraisal? Because obviously with the coronavirus, we want to be mindful of going into somebody's home and what does that look like? And so that's still being addressed. Um, I did see some changes uh, yesterday, the day before that they can sometimes do drive bys, uh, you know, drive by appraisals. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's across the board yet. So it's not in stone yet, but it's still like those kind of conversations are still happening and rules are still forming as we speak. And so again, if you're an escrow going to call you, you know, get an appraisal, <laughs> you may want to check what's going on. What are the current, you know, guidelines for that? And how soon should a lender order the appraisal once escrow is open? Typically, for me, I order that appraisal day one because now 
if you guys remember in the beginning of March, there was an excessive amount of refinances, over seven trillion, I think it was in um, locks. And so that really clogged up the system. So that every loan, you know, there's usually an appraiser on it. There's escrow on there. We have to get a payoff. You have to get notary. When we have an excessive amount of locks and refinances, there's only so much capacity we have to get these loans closed. And it does impact the purchase market as well. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, as far as the appraisers, it used to be that appraisers didn't really communicate with the realtors so much, but I recently went through a deal where the appraiser was contacted, contacted oh. often. Okay. <laughs> know anything about, about that and the relationship? Because I know the whole thing with 2008 happened and appraisals were somewhat of an issue, I believe. Do you know anything? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we still, those rules still apply. I can't be in communication with them. You know, we order from our appraisal um, panel. They, you know, reach out and they do the contact with the listing agent. So that's remaining the same. I think it's more the logistics of how to get in the house, how to get this uh, property appraised without, you know, too much contact. So they were working those details out with a refinances. That's a whole different ball game. You're not really involved in, but that is sometimes we get waivers. And so that's kind of a different arena that we have seen some changes there. Are um, you seeing a lot of refis right now? And do you predict that there'll be more refis if people might have lost their jobs or, um, I mean, given the volatility of interest rates, yeah, we definitely, today was an amazing day to lock. So I was in there this morning and locking some of my refinances. It was a fantastic day. The market is still pretty, you know, has been extremely volatile, There, you know, volatility across, you know, from, I think it's since the week, March, I want to say, um, it should slow down. It shouldn't be so up and down, but we don't know. I mean, they predict the rates to still be low over the next few years. There is going to be a lot of changes with people not paying their mortgage. So that's going to impact us. And I definitely, I mean, this is a little bit on a, on a side note, but if you know anyone who's in the position of maybe not paying their mortgage or their servicer has told them they don't have to, they need to be very, very careful and ask a lot of questions. Nothing comes for free. And right. so later on, for instance, if they want to refinance, we don't have a guideline to what that looks like. So they may lose opportunities to refinance later on if they're not going to be making their payments. It may not hit their credit, but as a mortgage lender, we look at the 12 months history of payments. Right. So they don't pay for the last three months. We don't know again. That's a guideline that has not been in place. So something to think about if they can still afford to make a payment, continue to make it and make sure they, you know, they're doing their homework. But again, that's just a side note because that is, but that's going on. You'll probably start hearing more questions about that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, for buyers that don't know about the loan process, say they're just buying a home for the first time and they don't know what the term lock means and they don't know about the appraisal and this and that, do you counsel your clients as to when they should lock? I mean, given that maybe like it's a 2.99% interest rate, um, do you yeah. let people kind of know as you go along? what they should be aware of? Absolutely. Um, typically, we when we say like you and I, you know, when you, we get the offer in, we're, you know, it's ready, set, go. Like we're, you're going within the first five days, I typically lock if the market is on our side and we have that discussion. Mm -hmm. And the reason also to lock fairly early on is because sometimes their debt to income ratios are very tight in the event the rates go up, they may lose their opportunity to purchase. So we want to secure a rate that they're comfortable with, that we discuss, that makes sense, that the market, we feel that the market is on our side and we lock typically 25, 30 day lock on a purchase depending on the contract. Mm -hmm. But in this climate is one of the things that I do want to point out is that you may see longer escrow periods. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to the beginning of our conversation that we are seeing, you know, extensions on that with, with the escrow and with the, you know, notary and, and appraisers, it may take longer. Mm -hmm. So 
having a longer escrow, being flexible. If you're going to purchase, it's still a great time. You could still get in there. People still need somewhere to live, but being realistic that there may be some lag time things, you know, there's only so much, you know, me as a lender could do. There's other parties involved in this transaction. So we do our part, but knowing that I would certainly lock probably at a longer lock right. to make sure that we close because what happens when your lock expires, it starts costing money. And depending, you know, on the situation, someone's going to pay that. <laughs> and so nobody likes to start, you know, um, adding to, a, you know, making additional costs that there was, a, it was a necessary. So, you know, so yes, absolutely educating the borrower now, obviously the, the season has changed and explaining what's going on in the market is so important. And if they want to purchase now, they could, you know, maybe get some good deals out there, but just to be aware. You know, again, the sky isn't falling, but it's changing and we just have to be aware of what's changing. And that's so important so that you can make an educated decision as you move along the process. Right. It's just day by day, hour by hour. Day by, exactly. You know, every day I'm getting these emails constantly. So we're just staying and really, you know, every loan's a little different too. So depending on where they are at in the process, you know, I, I did have, unfortunately, an FHA buyer I was working with, his FICO score was 620. Mm -hmm. And he was shopping for homes. And unfortunately at this moment, he does not qualify any longer. So mm -hmm. him and I sat together and we discussed, let's, let's use this time to increase your FICO score. It, the, the guideline may turn around and change for us, mm -hmm. but it doesn't hurt to increase your FICO score. Let's, it's never too early to get prepared. And so for him, we're going to utilize that now that we have extra time, mm -hmm. discuss how to raise the score. And so that he can still be working on purchasing. Maybe it's going to take a little bit longer, but there's still opportunity down the road. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And what you, I mean, I'm, I don't know that this is such a new environment. Um, and how do you feel about by, I mean, some, some people may not be comfortable doing video a, eh? but discussing their finances over video with you. How do you, how are you, how are the, how is the lending side dealing with the virtual? No, you know, it's actually, it's funny before this even happened, I would say I probably meet with less than 10% of my clients. Okay. Everything is online. It's already shifted that way. Mm -hmm. I think with, um, you know, the online systems, we are all paperless. If you, you know, I do have a buyer who does still, you know, they're not digital. I do have a brick and mortar. They can come into my office, but truthfully, the last few years, it's just been less and less um, contact. So I've closed loans where I don't even talk to the person on the phone. We've locked rates over text. So if they're comfortable, which most people are now, they could fill an application online. I have also an app. They can upload everything into the portal. It's completely secure. I will analyze. Where do they go to fill out that um, application with you? Um, they go to my website at www.valeriegonzalez.com okay. and there'll be a link just to get started. It should take 15, 20 minutes. They can fill out the application and typically 24 hour response time. Um, again, with the delays and all the other changes going on, it could be a little longer, but usually could review and analyze all the documents and get a full pre-approval in that amount of time. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. having agents, and I'm so guilty of this, <laughs> text you and call you, oh, can I get a pre-approval <laughs> on a buyer? <laughs> wanted to write an offer is probably not such a great idea right about now. <laughs> you, you, we want to be extra careful. You know, we yeah. really do. Typically, you know, I never do stated pre-approvals anyways. So if you call me, you know, I'm going to have you call, have the client call me and get that documents to me. Cause I want to review that for you because when we get into escrow, I don't want any surprises. And it's, especially in this climate, we definitely want to look at everything, see what jobs they have right now, what impact this, you know, viruses into their current employment, um, you know, retirement accounts, all those things that are being affected financially. We got to look at that, make sure there's continuous income because, you know, they're getting a mortgage for 30 years. So what is going on in your finances today is what we're going to be looking at, not even last month. And are you seeing people pull money out of the stock market and 
lean towards purchases? Have you seen any of that yet? Or is it a little bit too soon? I've heard, I, I don't have any particular um, situations I have, but definitely, you know, liquidity has been an issue because people are pulling all kinds of money out from everywhere. So it's definitely causing a little bit of the, you know, changes because when that happens, then we lose options, mortgage loan options. So it definitely certainly changes things. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So, and then about loan docs, um, the updated verification of employment, you touched on that. Um, yeah. And, and then a lot of lenders are saying, Hey, no worries. You know, we can, I mean, just, I haven't chosen them, but my clients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're just saying, Hey, no worries. Don't worry about it. We can do a VA loan right now. Easy. We can, you know, get this thing through. Um, what kind of expectations should, I mean, you did touch on it a little bit, but what, uh -huh. what should buyers be wary of when, when lenders are, kind of giving them a blanket sure we can do whatever for you you know if if there's lenders saying business as usual i would be very skeptical because they have no i i mean they're not aware or they're you know trying to i get it they're trying to paint a you know they, they don't want to worry you but it's this that that's unfair not giving you the actual accurate information because you are going to be unaware of the reality of what's going to happen creating more stress i mean it's better to know up front that there are big changes happening and it's okay we can get through this but if you don't know you don't <laughs> you're not you're not going to be aware of what could possible come so basically what i'm saying is to run <laughs> if they're acting like business as usual run they're just they're either unaware or they're trying to pull you know mm -hmm. a fast one on you so that is my personal recommendation <laughs> yeah okay and so tell me a little bit about your company too and why i mean buyers are just with the internet and online people are just they're online Googling like lowest interest rates and choosing all these online lenders. And, and then can you advise, like, tell me a little bit about your company and then yeah. as a buyer just going to their bank or choosing an online lender? Well, normally I always preach against the online lenders on a normal day. And now it's even more imperative to go with somebody that is, you are being referred by, um, a local person in your area even better, but even referrals, because I do work all over California with different, you know, on different properties, but they're all usually within referral partners I've worked with closed deals with before. So they know what to expect because of the capacity issue. If you're going to just search online for a lender for the best rate, you may find yourself end up losing a lot more money because they can't close that loan. You have contingencies that you need to meet and if they cannot meet that you are in a position to lose money or lose the property you may want mm -hmm. so don't just get so fixated on an interest rate because truthfully a lot of those big interests you know those companies out there uh oh <laughs> Uh oh, there we go. A lot of those big companies out there you know you may get an eighth of a percent less but sorry about that <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there we go. But, um, but you then still, you know, you still pay at the end. So it's not worth it. Go with a trusted lender or referral, somebody who's used them before. So important. Okay. That makes sense. And then, um, what's the best way for people to contact you? Um, anyway, I respond to all of the email, text, phone call, um, you could just simply go online, fill out the application. It will pop up on my side. I will reach out to you stating I've received it and I'm working on it. Any, you know, any form of communication, I, you know, I respond to all of them. Okay. Yeah. You make things yeah. really easy. I can attest to that personal, <laughs> personal experience. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Any, any final thoughts for people right now? Um, I just, you know, just. Overall, if you're going to continue to purchase or, you know, just continue to get educated, be flexible, um, you know, there's always opportunities in any climate. You and I both have been through the last crash in 2008. 
So we've seen it, we've came out of it, and there is always opportunity for the right person at the right time. You know, it maybe ends up being not being the right time for you right now, but it will be eventually. So it's never too late to get pre-approved, to have a lender have your information. And like for me with my clients, sometimes I work with them for over two years, but I have them in the system and I'm able to know their profile. And I know if there's guideline changes, I could easily connect with them. If I don't have your information, I can't continue to, you know, look out for you without the information. Otherwise we, then we have no plan. Right. Exactly. And yeah. then and then it's, it's nice to have someone to kind of be accountable to as to, right, you know exactly where you are and what you need to do and from firsthand. And I think maybe a lot of people get um, intimidated about the whole mortgage process. Yeah. And, and so a lot of people just feel like, well, I'm not ready yet. Well, that's, of course, you're not ready. If you don't get with a professional, they can't get you on a path to get ready. And you trying to get ready all on your own, you don't have, you know, the information that lenders or real estate agents have. We get the information daily updates. There's no way you would really know how to prepare without, a, you know, an assistance by a professional. Right. And it's yeah. really not that bad, especially when you work with someone good as I can. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, the application process takes like 15 yeah. or 20 minutes. You know, it's really, really, you know, simple. If you don't have your documents online, you have to scan them in, but it, it's, it's yeah. text. Like going to the dentist and you know that. <laughs> yeah, so once you get it done, they have it done. But exactly. it's tax, it's tax, you know, it's around tax season. So most people should have the documents, most of them handy. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So but it's actually a really good time to kind of get organized. Out. Yeah. <laughs> get organized. You have time. We have plenty of time. Hopefully you have plenty of time right now. Quarantine. <laughs> right <laughs> all right well thank you so much it's really nice to talk to you and absolutely it's been great we'll do this again as as we get new changes and updates um reach out anytime i'm here for you perfect thank you <laughs> thanks bye